Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jason. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry that maybe uh, our our webinar, our net network has some problems. So, uh, so for now, uh, I will start uh, our second topic first. Uh, and uh, in this training, uh, this training will be uh, two hours, and uh, the, and it will be uh, two topics. The first one is uh, I will generally introduce you with the Supermap iServer and the iPortal products. And the second one, uh, I hope that all of you can follow me to, uh, to, make, uh, to do one exercise. And the exercise topic is how to make your own GIS dashboards. And we will use the uh, coronavirus uh, dashboard as the example. OK. Um, and so, so our first one is the uh, introduction of Supermap I server. Uh, and uh, in this topic, there are many three content, the product position, positioning, product pack, uh, capabilities, and the product packages. So on Supermap, uh, and now what you are seeing is the, oh, sorry. What you are seeing is the Supermap JS 10i product system. And we can see in the center, it is the Cloud JS server. And there are many three products they are Supermap i server, i portal, and i manager. Uh, i server is the core product of all of the Supermap archi uh, products architectures. And, and besides of the Cloud Center, uh, on the terminal side, we have the PC terminal. There are I objects and I desktop. And web terminal, there are I clients for 2D and 3D. And on the mobile terminal, there are Supermap I mobile, it is a SDK. And, uh, and another one is I mobile, uh, is Supermap I tablet, which is an application. Okay. And the uh, Supermap I server is the core product for all the uh, Supermap product system. And iServer can help us to publish our service, to publish the service uh, and share the data with uh, other terminals, such as from PC, we can use uh, iDesktop to assess the services published by uh, Supermap iServer. Okay, so the product positioning is uh, of iServer. First, it is a service JS development platform. And it, uh, it is an enterprise JS server. Uh, it can, uh, we can use a server to publish both of 2D and 3D JS, and uh, uh, it can help us to build the enterprise level server. And also it is cross-platform. Uh, and and also uh, and it is a service a JS development platform. That means uh, a server is a service oriented architecture, and it can provide it provides the service oriented components. Uh, we can easily based on a server to do the extension development and to achieve our own requirements to meet our requirements. And uh, besides of publishing service and. Uh, uh, do the extension development. We can also do the client side. Uh, 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 sorry, if we want to make our own web application, then we need to do the <coughs> secondary development based on the service published by a server. So that is the client de development toolkit, which is iClient. Uh, the iClient actually is another product. It's on the web terminal, and it is the it provides as the SDK uh, and, or API, we can refer to iClient and to, to uh, based on uh, based on the SDK of iClient to do the to develop mm -hmm. our own application, mm -hmm. and uh, and we can based on it to do the various types of client application development con controls, and also both of two D and three D application can be developed. And next one is showing the users of uh, iServer. Uh, first is the, uh, the users can be uh, JS professionals, such as uh, they can, uh, everyone can use, uh, everyone can use iServer to publish the JS services. 
and the application developers is uh, corresponds to the third positioning of a server, which is we can based on a server to uh, to construct the application systems, and the system administrator uh, they can use a server to config config publish and manage JS services with SuperMap as server manager. Okay, and uh, and the second one is the uh, product capability. Uh, a server has the main function of enterprise level, uh, it is the enterprise level uh, JS server and also it is a service JS de development platform. So for, for the JS server, uh, the main function or the core capability of a server is we, we can use it to publish service, right? And here we listed uh, most of the services can be published by a server. Such as the first one is map service. We can based on map service to achieve the functions of map browsing, zooming, panning and map measurement, map query, and also we can do the semantic map. Uh, so uh, th this kind of map service is the basic capability of uh, the JS server products. And the second one is data service. We can, uh, uh, we can based on the, we can publish our data, spatial data as data service. And we can based on the data service to do the query query on data sources and data sites, and also the online editing. Uh, the online editing is the advantage of data service. It is the, the unique feature of data service, I mean, comparing with the map service, because based on map service, we can also do the query. We can query the features inside of the map. But, for, but if we publish the data service, that means we can not only query, but also we can edit our spatial data online. So uh, in some of cases, uh, like we need to, uh, in, in some of cases, uh, for example, uh, if the um, uh, uh, transportation uh, application, if we want to make a transportation application and we want, we want to achieve the function is like, uh, the users can uh, submit the event, such as the traffic accident, to the uh, traffic center. And the traffic center can see the position and related information on map directly. So in this case, we need to use the data service. That is, on the client side, we, can, uh, we need to achieve the function, which is uh, based on data service to upload or to add a new feature to a data set. Maybe the data set, the, uh, the name of this data set is uh, like traffic uh, accident. Uh, and then on the uh, server side or on the cloud center, the traffic control center side, then after, uh, and they, they will refresh the, the map every time and once there is a new feature added by the user, then we can see it on the uh, map directly. So this is the functions of data service. And the second one, uh, the third one is spatial analysis service. Uh, spatial analysis is one of the, uh, is another core capability of GIS actually. And uh, there are some, a lot of traditional spatial analysis services, uh, spatial analysis functions, such as clip, erase, delete, identity, intersect, union, update XOR for geometric objects and data size, buffer analysis, spatial relations, inner referencing, extract counter lines. So most of the traditional GIS spatial analysis, we can find it here. And the spatial analysis service uh, can only support data sites, but also, but also it can support uh, the geometry we uploaded from the client site. 
uh, that is we uh, that means uh, there are two options to use the spatial analysis service because analysis service only provides the capability and uh, so the first option is we can upload our that we can publish our data site as the spatial analysis analysis service then we can based on this data to do the spatial analysis directly and the second option is we can we can uh, construct or we can build the geometry on the client side and then based on the temporary geometry we can do the spatial analysis so so this is about spatial analysis service and the next one is network analysis service uh, network analysis is another important function in gis and uh, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, like requirements is related to network analysis, such as optimal path analysis, or we can say is best path analysis, traveling salesman analysis. Uh, the differences between tra traveling salesman analysis and optimal path analysis is uh, the optimal the optimal uh, optimal path analysis. Um, the path will be follow the order of stops. But traveling salesman analysis uh, won't follow the order, uh, won't, won't follow the order, but uh, just use the closest line to connect all of the stops. That's the differences. And so also multiple traveling sales analysis, salesman analysis, service area analysis, location or locations analysis, closest facility analysis. The closest facility analysis is also another important. Uh, like it's it's a very useful function. Uh, for example, if uh, if if there is a look, there is a location or the position which uh, occurs a traffic accident, and we and around here there are three hospitals. So we want to find the nearest or the closest hospital of this traffic accident position, then we can use the closest facility analysis to get the results and the best pass. Okay, and besides of this four, uh, here, uh, besides of this four, how to, how to say like basic GIS service there are another for we can do we can use a server to do uh, is the first one is traffic transfer analysis uh, this one is different with the network analysis because it is based on the public transport uh, public traffic transfer scheme such as we can uh, we can analyze the uh, the rules for us by bus for example we want to uh, from the point a go to point b and uh, if we use traffic transfer analysis and give it the parameters we have and we can get the result of how to go uh, how to go to the point b from point a by bus and the result will be like you need to take the bus one line one and from which station go to which station and then you need to transfer to uh such as bus line b uh, at which station and then you need to walk how long to go to go to our destination so this is the traffic transfer and the dress matching service is uh we can do the query uh query we can do the, we can achieve query places with address keywords that that means we can based on the address to get the coordinates of the place and we can also we can uh, in, input the coordinates and then to get the address of this place so these are two main functions of address matching service and next one is the 3d network uh, 3d network analysis a 3D analysis service or 3D network analysis service. Uh, this it is mainly about 3D. 
like uh, as as we know, SuperMap supports both of 2D and 3D, and it is an integrated uh, GIS platform products. And for a server, it's the same. A server can publish 3D uh, 3D service directly, like the 3D data publishing, 3D data query, and also the 3D network analysis, which is different different with the 2D network analysis. For example, if we want to analyze the the pipeline underground pipeline and different pipeline has different depths so based on the pipeline we can uh, based on this kind of pipeline we can create it, the 3d network model or 3d network data size and then we can publish this data as a 3d network analysis service so we can achieve this function on web and next one is geometry service, which is with no need of map or data service. We can do the measure area, distance, and the transform coordinates. All right. And besides of, besides of these eight functions, there are some other uh, new function added by the new version of our server. The first one is distributed analysis service, which is related to the big data service. Uh, and it is related to the big data analysis, which we can do the uh, distributed map visualization, distributed cluster based on Spark. Uh, that is, uh, we can, based on Spark, we can add multiple work nodes to Spark cluster. And we can use the master node to publish the distributed analysis. And we just give the task to the master. Then the master will distribute the task into multiple no uh, node work, uh, worker nodes. And they can finish the analysis together. Then, on the, uh, then we can use this, uh, we, use, we just based on this technology to enhance the performance of spatial analysis. And the second one is real-time data service, which is uh, uh, related to the IoT. So just when we get the IoT information or the IoT data is always continuously. For example, the, uh, the, for example, the GPS, for example, the mobile signal, uh, or like the, uh, the sensors collected the data, they're all continuous. And if, uh, and in the traditional way on GIS software, we always need to send the request to server and get the result back. So this is a traditional method. But based on the, but the differences of real-time data service is we, uh, the server is like a receiver and the client side is like a sender. So it will send the information to the server side continuously and without like, the request and to uh, send back the results. And next one is the data catalog service, which is related to also big data and it is related to big data storage. That is, uh, we can register the multiple data source to the data catalog service, such as we have, uh, I have one HBase. Uh, and the HBase has different, has multiple nodes, the HBase node one, HBase node two. And also I have another one is MongoDB. I'm, uh, yeah, MongoDB. And there's another one is HDFS. Then I can use a server and it is a specific, the function a specific, the service is data catalog service. I can use this data catalog service to manage all of my database. And and I can easily construct or query the data from multiple database. So they can provide, they can as the unique object to provide the spatial data. All right, and the last one is data stream service. Like it is a real time data transfer and it can provide server pro uh, propagation and client and subscription function based on WebSocket uh, protocol. So 
uh, this data, uh, data stream service is work with the real time data service together. They work together to uh, build the GIS technology of real time data. <clears throat> All right. And um, just now I already introduced to you all of the uh, the i server uh, ser uh, the services can be published by a server. And now we uh, we can take a look at the service management capability. And in i server, uh, when when if if uh, when we first start the i server, we can uh, we need to create the create an administrator account. And use this administrator account, we can log in and we can go to the management page of a server. So what we are seeing is the management page of a server. We can see there are some functions like the, we can manage the services, the clusters, the logs, the security, monitoring, uh, backup, task, license, and the sighting. So, uh, and later I will introduce you all of this function one by one. All right. <clears throat> and so just now, uh, besides of the, uh, besides of the uh, services and the service management and how to use the service, we need, we can use the Supermap iClient to us, uh, uh, to achieve the functions on web terminal as whatever we want, and the Supermap I client can be based can based on uh, different coding language like JavaScript, uh, Flash, WebGL plugin. Uh, like this plugin is for three D and also Android and iOS. So. Uh, so this uh, and later I will uh, introduce you the I client in detail by another PowerPoint. And for the support uh, personalized GIS service, then uh, iServer also, it is the extension, it, it support the extension development. So just allow to construct industrial service components for all service layers and or construct custom business components quickly, realize dynamic linkage integration of service layers and also manage cost, uh, custom service easily. Okay, and the third one is the product package. Uh, they, there are the list of Supermap as server products. We can find it from our, the website of Supermap. And uh, there are many uh, four types, four types of I server. The first one is install package. Uh, and there, there are Supermap server 10 i4 Windows, 64 bytes or 22 bytes. And on this one, there will be a install.exe and just you just need to click, click it and uh, you can install uh, the license drive of Supermap and also the iServer. But if you already have uh, other products on, uh, other Supermap products on, uh, your PC or laptop, such as you already installed the Supermap at desktop. So that means you already have the Supermap license. Then you don't need to install the license again, license drive again, and you don't need to install the, then you don't need to use the install package. You can use the Z package directly, the IP packages. And on this one, uh, you can't, uh, and the, on this one, the format of this package is just dot zip, dot zip, and you can unzip it directly. And uh, uh, inside of there is inside of the the folder there is a startup bat bat bat, and you can just double click it to start the I server. And we can notice that uh, inside of the zip pa zip, zip packages there are uh, I server 10 i4 Windows and I server 10 i4 Linux. That means uh, for different 
uh, operating system for different OS, we have the different packages like the Windows version and the Linux version. And next one is the WAR package. Uh, WAR package, um, how to explain? Yeah, it, it's like the differences between WAR package and zip package is the zip package is a server based on the Tomcat. Uh, I think maybe maybe you know the Tomcat is one of the most, uh, it is the most famous middleware in developing. A lot of web application is based on Tomcat. So iServer is the same. The default package of iServer is based on Tomcat. But if you want to use other middleware, such as web, web package, such as web package, then you can use the, you can download the WAR package of iServer and you need to deploy this WAR package on your middleware. Then you can use as server all right now let's continue with the supermarket i client for javascript introduction yeah uh, and this one it won't take us uh, a lot of time and there are only two contents the first one is product introduction and the second one is how to select products and why we have the topic of product selection i will explain to you later so first, the Supermap iClient JavaScript, it is a development toolkit and it provides us the libraries for client JS application. The unified JS client terminal for consuming four cloud carriages and online service. That is, uh, the iClient is the SDK for us to use the JS services published by Supermap products like iServer, iH, iPortal, like I, or iManager and uh, online. Then uh, here we mainly, we mainly talk about iServer because iServer is the, is the only one which can directly publish a service. Okay. And, <coughs> and uh, iClient I for JavaScript has two libraries. The first one is map libraries and uh, data visualization. Data uh, they are they work together to provide us the the, the best effect of JS uh, of web JS and Supermap icon for JavaScript has four packet four uh, how to say it, four products. It is based on different libraries, and we only need to choose one of them to use. That's enough. So here uh, we. Uh, I will introduce the uh, MapJS library and the visualization library. The map, the map, the map, map libraries. There are open layers, uh, leaflet, uh, Mapbox GL, and also open layers too. There are four types, uh, and the visualization library is there are the uh, Mapbox and uh, eCharts or MapV. So. Uh, they, but they work together and we only need to choose one of the map libraries and the visualization library, it can provide us the cool visualization effect when we do the developing. And uh, here we can see uh, the, uh, this is the link, the sample code of uh, iClient. If you are using the zip package or install package of a server, I mean the full package of a server with the sample code and sample data, then you can uh, you can visit the localhost 8090 i server, the i client for JavaScript for JavaScript web index.html, or you can just click the sample code on the top of the home page of a server. You can just jump to this page directly. And there is an online sample called website, which is iClient.supermap.io. You only need to input iClient.supermap.io, and then you can see the result like this. Uh, here, uh, and uh, the WebJS, then, and the next one is like how to select map library. As I mentioned, there are four types or four libraries of iClient. 
then how can we uh, select from them? We only need to use one of them. So first, we can take a look at the, uh, this diagram, this table. And we can see actually for most of the requirements we encountered in our daily life, we can solve them with leaf light. And, uh, and we can see the leaf light, open layers, Mapbox, GL, uh, they are all open, so open source. And SuperMap just to, based on this open source uh, codes and to, to improve their capability and also to integrate them with SuperMap services. And the SuperMap iClient is also open source. It's free and open source. So for LeafLight, it has the advantage of high performance, high stability, uh, and it has the perfect extension, ex, uh, extensibility and the community activities at the start. Uh, this start is the start on GitHub and it has the high star and the software uh, maturity is high and the community uh, ec ecological chain is perfect and uh, uh, like how to learn it is not so high. So it seems most of the requirements, most of times we can just choose leaf flat directly. But why we need others? On open layers three, uh, based on open layers, open layers three or four, it is another very good, uh, very good uh, uh, library. Like it can provide us the powerful capabilities like if we if you really know both of them sometimes you will find that uh, some of the function we cannot find it from leaflet but we can easily find it from open layers so the open layers is kind of the high way, high way weight and less plugins but itself has the enough strong enough product and for mapbox gl uh, the performance of Mapbox GL is very high, and it has, uh, but it only supports the Web Mercato, the Mercato coordinate system, like which is the EPS, EPSG code is 3857. And the iClient Classic is based on OpenLayers 2. Uh, on this one, uh, SuperMap already did a lot uh, for the iClient Classic, but now uh, only some of them, some of people use Aclan Classic, but I am one of them. I like to use Classic. Okay, and talking about how to select map, uh, how to select the map library, like, but how about the visualization library? So we can take a look, uh, they can work together, so we can take a look at them. So this is the leaflet and map v. Map v is one of the visualization library. And this is Mapbox and Map V. They are the same, right? And leaflet with e charts. This is Mapbox with e charts. Okay, so just like what I said, we only need to choose one of the map library, and and the uh, and for the visual, visualization library, we can use them for uh, um, based on all of this map. Uh, Library. So now let's take. Uh, I want to show you. Uh, I want to show you the uh, the sample code website of uh, of a client. So we only need to import a client dot supermat dot io, right? And uh, sorry, my web browser is in this one is in Chinese. But if I use a, a English web browser, we can see it's like this. Okay, and on the top we can see the overview. There are some. Uh, there are some like the sorry the the functions. Uh, there is this is it is showing all the functions of iClient, and we can see uh, what kind of uh, what kind of uh, browsers can be supported for like for LeafLight, for OpenLayers, for Mapbox GL, and also Atlantic Classic, and map-based library, uh, the version, 
and also the third party plugin and the, the license. So there are a lot of overview information of our client JavaScript 10i. And, we, and then we can take a look of suggest for leaf light examples. And now we can see there are a lot of sample codes we can assess, we can refer to. For example, based on the map service, we can show the service, we can do the query, the map query service, the geometry query, distance query, a lot of query. And the data service, uh, this one is showing the data editing, the data editing, right? And based on the semantic ser server semantic service, the spatial analysis service, and we can do the overlay analysis, we can do the interpolation analysis, and we can do the buffer, we can do the uh, mass expression. There are a lot of spatial analysis and also network analysis. We can do, we can, uh, we can find the best path, this one, and also the find location, find the closest facility, right? And we can take a look of it. Like if we click the closest facility, then we can run this example directly. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that, uh, I'm sorry that the, the data is in Chinese, but I think it's no problem. The data is in Chinese. And on the corner, we can see there is the, button name as source, right? And we just click the source on the left side. Then on the left side, we can we can see there is the code. This is the source code of the uh, samples. And if we just, if we mod it, uh, if we edit the source code, for example, if I, uh, I want to add a, a learned, I added a uh, alert here, like one, one, one. Okay, I added a alert here, and then I can click run. Okay, now we can see uh, we can get a uh, alert. So that's e that's very easy for us to debug or to understand the uh, the samples showing on the right side, and we can use a reset or run. Okay, so uh, this is about uh, iServer, and and next I want to explain to you about uh, the folder of iServer. Okay, this is one of the this is the iServer we got, and uh, uh, the link I shared with you. Uh, actually, it is the deploy version of iServer. And uh, and uh, after we unzip it, we can get the folder uh, structure like this. And in the bin folder, inside of bin, there is a there's a file named as startup.bat. Okay, startup. So we just need to double click the startup.bat, then we can run a server. And it will take a few minutes. Okay, besides of a server, I think uh, if you already downloaded uh, the products I shared with you, uh, there is another one which named as data store. Supermap as server data store. And do do you remember just now I mentioned that on data store, uh, uh, there is a data catalog service can be published by a server, right? And if we want to use it, we need to use the data store. And the data store can help us to deploy some of the database directly. It's very easy, very convenient. So in data store, it's the same in bin folder, we can click the startup.bat and to run data store. I think you, you can follow me to do that. Okay, we just wait a few minutes, maybe one minute is enough.
And after we start up it, we can go to web browser and import localhost 8090. The default port of I server is 8090, localhost 8090. And it is still starting. Okay, now now we can see when we see the start server, the server started start up in blah blah ms. That means that the I server already started. Then this is if it is the first time for us to start up the I server, then we can see we need to create it. We can we need to create the account, the check the environment and check license first. Okay, and uh, for created the account administrator account we need to import the administrator as uh, we just name it such as i just input as the admin and then the password and confirm the password okay and create and then we need to check the environment like the super uh, the server is based on supermap i objects java and there is a, there is one built in already, and it is based on GRE, and we all we all, we also can find it from a server package and click next. Then it is check the license, and in my laptop in my laptop I'm using the free trial license, and click next. Okay, now configuration complete. We can go to home page. Yeah, now what we are we are seeing is the home page of our server. And uh, if, as I mentioned just now, if if this is a full package, then in the sample code for leaflet, we can we can check the uh, the sample code of our client directly. But this one is a deploy version, so uh, there's no the sample code. But we can also use it to publish our data. All right, and if we can click the services and take a look at all the services published by this server, but now there's it is empty. Later I will show you. And in the manager, click the management, then we need to input the username and password of administrator. Then we can go to the management, the back end, uh, back the back end of a server to do the management. And only in the management we can publish the service. Okay, and and besides we are we also start up the uh, I server data store, right? And we can see the port of I server data store is eighty twenty. So we can we we also we can go to localhost to eighty twenty and here we uh we, we just need to config the data store and we need to input the url of our i server and uh, it better be the actual ip so uh we, that means we cannot use uh the local local host as the ip so here i can uh, use the cmd and to import ip config to find my actual ip which is this one right and uh, i need to use it to replace the local host yeah it's the same right okay and then go to here to input the ip of a server and the username and password of this I server and here this is to uh, choose the content directory just click next and here we can uh there are four types of database we can configure it based on a server data store like relation binary the tile cache uh special uh, uh, spatial temporal uh, temporal the, so uh, and for this time we only need to choose the relation click next finish and it will take a few moments to uh, do the configuration of a server All right, 
uh, like while waiting, maybe you can follow me to uh, do the same steps. And now I think uh, it's kind of it's time for we we can take a, a fifteen minutes uh, break. How about we take a coffee coffee break and uh, please come back in fifteen minutes. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. So uh, let's continue. Yeah, I, I saw that uh, there is a, a question is about the local host 1890 and here I will show it again. So first, uh, we need to down, I, I, we need to download the supermap I server data store. This one supermap I server 10.10.1 win64 data store we need to download it and to end the page here like this is the zip file and uh, after that <clears throat> uh, we need to open it and inside of bin folder bin inside of bin folder there is a startup.bat startup.bat and we just need to double click to open it and a few moments later, <clears throat> we can. Uh, a few moments later, we can. <coughs> sorry, we can import the localhost 1890, and then we just need to config the URL of our I server and the administrator account of I server. So we just we just need to do that, and after that, we can say. Uh, after a few moments waiting, uh, we can see the config rate status. I server data store relationship, the component was successfully conf configured for I server. You can create it or import data sites from I server data catalog service to data store. All right, so this is config the data, log, uh, data catalog service. And we can go back to I server. And on I server, it's, uh, it's the same. We just I just need to use the actual IP. This is the actual IP of my laptop and the 1890i server. And now if we go to the services, we go to the services instead of REST, REST service. Instead of REST service, there is one data catalog REST. And we can open it to take a look. We just need to take a look. And inside of the service, we can see the relationship, the relationship, <clears throat> and uh, uh, we can do the query based. Uh, we can we can manage the relationship database on the data catalog service. <coughs> okay. And now we just we just put it here. We don't need to do uh, we don't need to do more about I, I server. And in the exercise, I will show you uh, about uh, how to do. Uh, how to operate with that server. All right, and now let's go to our second topic, which is iPortal. Yeah, and uh, sorry, yeah, iPortal, Supermap iPortal overview. And uh, the, the similar uh, product system, right? And, uh, Besides of Supermap I server, and we have the Supermap I portal. It's, it is also one of the CloudJS server. Okay, so I portal the po the position of I portal is here, and uh, but what is I, I portal, <clears throat> or what is the relationship with Supermap I server? First, I server is responsible for publishing JS services. I server is responsible for publishing JS services. But iPortal is cooperate, it, it cooperates with iServer to register the services published by iServer and to host the iServer, uh, host iServer to publish the service. And make sure of data of iServer for online mapping and make use, oh sorry, make use of data of a server for online mapping and make use of spatial analysis services of a server for data insights. <clears throat> and and, uh, 
and later uh, here. What the next is what can Supermap iPortal do? First, Supermap, uh, first Supermap iPortal can be the GIS resource portal platform. GIS resource portal platform. Like we can use iPortal to achieve the function of resource integration, resource sharing, resource discovery, and resource management. That is, <clears throat> but what is the differences between Supermap iPortal service management and Supermap iServer service management? Like what is the differences between Supermap iPortal service management and Supermap iServer service management? It's like <clears throat> iServer service management is only focused on the services published by this iServer, but iPortal is focused on the resource. The, the resource is not only service, but like the map is one of the resource. The data, the spatial data itself is one of the resource. The service is one of the resource. And the scene, the 3D scene is one of the resource. And also some others such as like web dashboard, such as data insights, they are all the resource of iPortal. So this is one of the differences. And another one is why we need to use iPortal, why we need to use iPortal to manage the resource. Uh, for example, if we only have one iServer and this iServer published maybe 10 services and we based on these 10 services to do the secondary development and uh, to do the, uh, and to, uh, to build our own GIS web application. In this case, we don't need iPortal anymore. We don't need iPortal. But how about like uh, the government, one of the government department or one of the big company, they have 10 iServer. And every iServer published 100 services. And based on all of this iServer, there are like 10 or 20 applications based on this iServers. So in this case, this time, we have to use iPortal to integrate all of the GIS resources from iServer, from also from the database, from other uh, data source, from other source of data to integrate them and to manage them into one. So a portal, like why it's portal, is the unique access, unit access of all GIS resources. So uh, like, like what, uh, yeah, th this is uh, what can Supermap iPortal do. And who needs iPortal? First is the industrial geographic information infrastructure platform construction and application organizations. For example, the GS platform, a certain industry of a province or pro a province or a, a state of one country. And uh, it's, it's focused on one industry. So this is like the, uh, the example I mentioned, like if we have more than one application and more than one as server, then we can use that portal. And second is the urban geographic information public platform construction and application organizations. For example, the geographic information public service platform of a city. So this one is focused on the public service. Uh, for example, if you want, um, like just, just such as if you want to uh, create a public GIS service platform like Google for your own city. And uh, iProto can help you to do that. And the second one is large scale enterprise geographic information platform construction and application uh, organization, such as the GIS platform of a group. So large scale, inter so th th this is focused on the enterprise geographic information platform. And in a word, iPortal can help us to organize the different GIS resources from different source. So uh, various users will re uh, with requirements of GIS service sharing. Okay. And 
uh, here I listed some of the product features, like the resource integration, resource discovering, resource sharing, resource management, uh, portal customer uh, customization and web apps. Let's take a look at of, uh, let's take a look of them. First, this is the home page of Super iPortal 10i, and uh, we uh, and iPortal provides us the sign sign in and sign up function. And in sign up function, uh, we need to, uh, we can input the account nickname, uh, password, confirm password, security question, and security answer. Okay, and for the resource integration, uh, Apollo has a res can integrate the resource like services, map, scenes, applications, and data. Uh, we need to notice that here the service inside of service we mentioned there is a map service, right? But the map service is different with maps. The map service is only a service. If we don't use this, uh, if we don't based on the uh, client side, uh, client side uh, library to show it, it is only a service we cannot see it. But maps is the real map we can see, the elect electric map we can see. So that's the differences. And we can display and use resources uniformly. Also, and the second, the second one is resource discovery. Like there are a lot of tools to help us to quickly find our resource in multiple ways, <clears throat> like the fuzzy search, like cat, uh, category sorting, like category filter, like tag filter. Okay, and this is the the. This is the interface of iPortal, and on the uh, left side, we can see the, uh, here a service classification. We can, based on it, to organize our service. And the types, uh, like the SuperMap REST, ArcGIS REST, WMS, WFS, uh, OGC uh, service type, and also the tags. <coughs> We can based on the text to manage our, uh, to manage, to manage our uh, resources, resource, yeah. And the second one is resource sharing. So uh, the resource sharing is uh, when we upload our data to, uh, to iPortal, or when we want to register our uh, GIS service to iPortal, then we can choose the uh, the types of sharing scopes. Like public means everyone can see it. Specific, uh, specified departments or group, uh, that means you can share your resource with the specific department. And specific users, uh, specified users, it means you can choose some of the users you want to select. And also the private means only yourself can see it. So, and uh, and uh, there is a and besides of the uh, like sharing scope, here we can also choose the unified uh, authorization control of models or service. So just as we as as we know the service, even you don't want uh, suggest so in one i server there are like ten service and for five of them you want to share them with all of, all, all of the users of this app portal like uh, we we need to choose it as public but 10 of the about five of them is your own private service you don't want others to see it so <clears throat> how about if other people can uh, see if other people can see the real url of the these five public service, then they can based on this service to find your i server, and they can then they can find another five service of your i server. Right? This is not what we want, so we can use the proxy address to forbidden this kind of uh, thing happen. Such as <coughs> we can see on the left side. The there is a, uh, and we can, we need to notice that this is login with the admin, right? And 
if we log in with admin for the same resource, we can uh, we can see there are two URL. The first one uh, is the real URL, and the proxy address is the URL after the proxy. Okay, and uh, we can see the IP and port are different. But if we if we uh, log in with another account with another user and we can see there is only one URL and this URL actually is the proxy address. So this is based on the proxy address function to manage the permission or the security of service. All right. And uh, next one is the resource management. Uh, for the resource management, uh, here we can match them based on the department. This is very interesting. Like, uh, like on the left, uh, like if in one company or uh, in one uh, government, uh, they have different departments. And uh, we can organize all the users and uh, resources based on the organization of department such as the administrator of department one only can manage the user and the resource the resource published or uploaded by the users of department one and it and they cannot manage or even search the resource of department two Okay, and also the department two can only manage the resource and user of department two. So, and this department can be multi-level. All right. So that is the resource management. And next one is the portal customization. Portal customization. And in iPortal, there is a customization, uh, there is a, zero code virtual customization arrange portal homepage like we can easily drag the location drag the place of components of the home page of our portal and the custom uh, customize ui components and adjust the layout of ui components at the home page and to uh, uh, custom the portal and we can do the in-depth customize customization uh, this is the help document and uh, from the help document we can easily find the steps how to customize the building of development environment the front end custom uh, development process the back end custom development process the integrate the users existing account system and i portal upgrade code merge consist a uh, consideration so uh, we can also based on the help document to find how to do the in-deep customization of a portal and the last one the last feature of a portal is the data apps is the data app there are some there are some uh, web application already built in a portal such as online mapping such as same browsing like data insights, create applications. Okay, and for, for example, the online mapping, we can do the online mapping based on portal directly, such as if we upload, such as I have one special data and uh, I, want to, I want to show it and I want to uh, configure the style of, uh, configure the style of every, style, uh, every layers or I want to create some thematic map, then we can upload the data to a portal and do the mapping on, on a portal directly. And also the scene browsing, we can, uh, we can browse the 3D scene on web. And data insights, this is, uh, this is a function can help us to uh, do the online spatial analysis. And also we can based on the map and the result of analysis to create the report. 
to create some reports based on that insights. Okay, and the map app builder, uh, which is can help us to build our own web app uh, very in some, in some very easy steps. Okay, so uh, thanks. And uh, this is the uh, overview of Supermap App Portal. And at the same time, let's take a look the, the real products of App Portal. So, uh, and uh, we can, and this one, uh, this is App Portal 10.0.1 Win64 deploy. And this is the uh, App Portal file I shared uh, yesterday. And inside of iPortal folder, it's the same. We can go to bin, double click, and find the startup.bat. Startup.bat, okay? And double click to open the iPortal. Yeah, we need to we need to wait a moment. Sorry, hello, Jason. Jason, we cannot hear you. Can you uh, open yeah. your mic? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, now it's okay. Can you repeat again, just now? Oh, sorry, what should I repeat it? Uh, because your mic has been shut down for about one minute. Uh, uh. Just just because uh, we are waiting for the start of iPortal and it okay. will take a moment. Okay, okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, now we can see uh, iPortal already started and uh, when we can see the uh, the sentence like uh, the server startup uh, startup in blah blah ms and the default port of a portal is 81900 81900 so we can go to the uh, the browser and uh, import localhost 81900 localhost 81900 All right, it, it is similar with iServer. Like if this is the first time for us to start up iPortal, we need to create the administrator account first. Okay, and administrator, give it the same name with iServer. Yeah, here we can input any or whatever we want. And the password uh, is the same. We just need to set the password of administrator of this iPortal and click create. Uh, it's the same, check the system environment and iPortal is based on GRE, all right? And next, and check the license. I'm using the Supermap free trial license. Next. Okay, and we can click home page. And now uh, what we are seeing is the home page of iPortal. And uh, we can see uh, the, the, this is the, this is the home page and the resource center. There are map service scene data map dashboard insights and the app center and the data wise. Uh, we, we can go to take a look at the resource center. 
as default, there is only one map, one only one map, right? And the service on the left side, you can see the service, the scene, the data, the insights, map dashboard. They are all resource. They are all resource of iPortal. Uh, iPortal can manage all of this resource. Okay, and the app center. There are already some of the built-in map, built-in app inside of iPortal, like data wise, that insights, map dashboard, Earth. And there are some others like that wise. So uh, create the first map and uh, here. And uh, as the default, it is showing the A map, right? It is showing A map. And A, A map is, uh, the, is one of the Chinese uh, online based map. Mm, I don't like it. And we, I, I, I think you are the same. You don't want to use the Chinese map, right? So uh, here I will tell you how to modify it. Okay, we can go back and on the right, there is a sign in. We can click sign in and import the, mini, uh, the account of administrator. Uh, yeah, and the admin, uh, this is the account of administrator. I just uh, import it and click sign in. All right, after we sign in with the administrator account, there is uh, the management. And click the management, we can go to the back end of iPortal. This is the management page of iPortal, right? And the site configuration, inside of site configuration, click data wise, data wise, and this is to choose the default base map. Default base map. Okay, so I can we we can select this A map and delete it and add internet map. Add uh, maybe like open. Oh, I want to add open street map. Open street map. Then click OK. All right, now it is showing the open street map and then click save, click save, operate it successfully. And now we can go back to the, uh, to the home page of our portal to take a look. And in the data wise, we need to open it. And now uh, what we are seeing, uh, what we are seeing is the open street map as the base map. I think OpenStreetMap is very good to use as a base map because it is based on the uh, language used by this country, and it is showing uh, different. It is showing the different country, a different language on a different area of country, right? Okay, so this is the uh, visualize, and here we can add other. Uh, here we can add. We can click add layer and choose a lot of different. Uh, method to add more layers, such as add from file. Then I can upload the I can upload the file. Uh, I can upload the data, or I can choose from my data, or I can choose the sample data. Okay, so this is the uh, data wise, and uh, the data insights is to create your first data uh, is to uh, create the uh, inside project and uh, we can do the spatial uh, online spatial analysis here such as we if I click sample right and this is I click I click sample and we can see there are so this is the one the type uh, the sample of that insight and we can achieve a lot of different cool effects of spatial analysis or statistics. I, we can see a lot of, uh, we can see like this kind of uh, uh, in, uh, analysis results and uh, uh, they are all related to the map and on the map we can see the heat map and here 
is showing some different information, right? And there are some other statistical results. And for this one, we can share them or we can export to PDF. Like, and uh, on this view, uh, it can be a, uh, it can be a, uh, uh, like title of this report. Uh, let me find another one. Maybe this one. Okay, so we can see this is a sample project showing retail sales data for a brand in January 2009. Okay, data source from an open data project with total there are 997 records. Okay, so for this one, for example, if I want to, uh, if I want to uh, export it, I can click the export here and export as PDF. Export as PDF. Is the process of exporting, and uh, here I can see I can uh, the browser start to download it directly. Yeah, and if I click it, I can see the result as a PDF. So it's very easy for us um, to analyze something and to create the report suggests uh, you, you need to create a report about your work to your boss. Then maybe if your data is related to GIS, it's related to the uh, geography, you can use, you can try to use Superman iPortal to create the report like this. It's very easy and very cool, right? All right, and uh, then we can go back to so this is the general inf uh, introduction of uh, that insight. And next one is the map dashboard. Uh, this is the key uh, we want to, uh, I want to show you uh, the key uh, web app I want to show you. And inside uh, there are some templates. For example, if I choose this one, this one is in, in, in the center, it is 3D, okay. Uh, I'm sorry that the words uh, in the example is in uh, is in Chinese, but uh, it has it, it is okay because uh, we can easily uh, edit it. And all the tours they are in English. They are all in English, such as the component, the map, scene, uh, and zoom, uh, pen, like all of the tours we can choose and also, if we choose the choose one of the diagram here, and on the right side the configuration, the all the configuration, they are in English. Okay, and for this one I will show you later. And uh, and now uh, this is the general introduction of iPortal. So uh, we already finished it, and next I want to show you how to use the how to create our own GIS dashboard and take the example of uh, of the corner uh, the, the corner virus map. Uh, wait a moment. Yeah, here uh, here is one uh, article about it like uh, it's showing in our daily work uh, in the area of big data, we are often bothered by the form of data expression, large amount of data, many kinds of data, data presentation styles and layout of charts will always delay time and fail to show good results. So with the uh, coronavirus becoming a hot topic in the world recently, governments and companies in various countries have set up their own coronavirus dashboard. Then do you want to make your own one? So the Super iPortal provides you with the out-of-box 
super a portal web app map dashboard, which provides you with the convenient drag and drop components and can easily build a beautiful data, uh, dashboard. Map dashboard can show the charm of JS spatial, uh, spatial, uh, spatial temporal data visualization. At the same time, it can help GSER easy, easily build a web dashboard application with a professional and beautiful map, support a variety of data types and meet your different visualization needs. Just move the mouse like making PowerPoint, you can get a beautiful dashboard. And this is the result of the, of the dashboard. Uh, and in this document, here is showing all of the information we need, like the download link, and on the YouTube, we, you can you can find the operation we do, and also the download link of a server, a portal, a server data store, and also the download link link of uh, oh wait of the data. Yeah, here is data preparation, uh, coronavirus data, and I just got it from the GitHub. And also from uh, the drive.google, uh, Google Drive, I, I just after the process of data, I upload it to the uh, drive, uh, to the Google Drive. So now uh, I will lead you to make the JS dashboard step by step, okay? And uh, first we can, uh, we can take a look at, uh, we can take a look at it, it's here. Uh, there are four steps to create the dashboard. The first one we need to prepare, uh, we, we, we need to uh, do the software preparation. We already finished it, right? And the second one is data preparation. And then we need to do, we need to show the data. Is this data visualization? Uh, and, to, and on this step, we need, we want, we will use Supermap uh, data wise. Uh, it is also the or web app built in a portal to do the data visualization. And the last one is making dashboard. Okay, and uh, I think you already got the data from the link I shared yesterday. It is like this data here. I think it is like this data. And uh, there are, uh, I think what you, uh, you have is two files. The first one is world coronavirus data. We can take a look at it. There are two types of data, daily data and time series, okay? And in daily data, uh, here we only choose from January 2 to, uh, oh, we, only, we only choose some of the days. And we can take, take a look at the CSV. Okay, and uh, this is the raw data of uh, our coronavirus data. We can see the we can see the uh, the fields, the field name. Like the first one is province, and the second one is country, uh, province or state. The second one is country or region, and last update and confirmed cases, death cases recovered latitude and longitude, right? Uh, I can open it with uh, uh, Office Excel. In Excel format, you, you, it will be clear. Like province or status, country, region, last update, confirmed, death, recovered, latitude, longitude, okay? And uh, for example, Hubei. Uh, Hubei, mainland China, and confirmed is this one, this one. And the second one is Italy. Italy confirmed is more than uh, 10,000 10, that, that time, that time. And uh, Iran and uh, South Korea, like French. And, uh, uh, and uh, because that time only China has, a, uh, only Ch China is the main point, uh, of a uh, coronavirus, so only China China has the province, and others uh, it is the, the United States country. Okay, so we can based on this data to make a map. 
And besides of this, we have another one, which is time series. Time series, okay. And inside of time series, there are three uh, Excel, the time series confirmed, death, and uh, uh, recovered. For example, if we take a look at the confirmed, we can see, uh, we can see the field uh, the field is like date this is date and uh, total total is all the confirmed number and uh, this is china uh, and this is the uh, confirmed uh, uh, confirmed number in china and out of china right i just choose this to show you and others is like anhui mainland china beijing china chongqing china fujian gansu and other uh, province of china and later we can see other country such as uh, such as yeah, there are a lot uh, they are all uh, countries like Mongolia like Holy See like uh, China Iceland uh, Burkina Faso like uh, yeah like this uh, Hawaii uh, and this uh, so this is the data of uh, time series. And for every row, it is the data of this day. Okay, so we will based on these two to create our dashboard. So, uh, and besides of these two con uh, coronavirus data, there is another one which is the world 4326.zip. 4326.zip. And inside of it, there are two files, which is the spatial, the spatial data, spatial data, like the UDB and UDD. Uh, these two are the format of supermap file data source. I think maybe uh, later Qin will uh, share the information of this to you. So we don't, uh, and uh, for now, I, ju I, I just need to, I just want to show you once. With a moment, let me start up the Supermap app at desktop. Okay, and uh, uh, we can open the this file data source. And I just want to show you file data source. Okay, this one. And inside of the inside of the data source, there is a data set named as Word. All right. So this is a, this is the 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 Word Word map, right? And uh, we can we can see uh, for every one it has the name the same for every polygon inside. It has the same name with our uh, coronavirus Excel data. For example, if I choose this one, and uh, you can see the country or region, it has this field as country or region, and the name is India, right? And if we choose uh, this one, uh, like this one is Hubei, mainland China. So we will just based on this data as a base map to create our own dashboard. And today we don't need to use iDesktop anymore. For this for this exercise, all, all, all of the operation we will do it online. Okay, now we just need to close the iDesktop. And please notice that uh, if we upload the data to cloud, we don't need to this. We don't need to use this folder. We just need to upload the ZIP to cloud directly. Okay, so this is the data preparation, and the and next step is the data is the data visualization. Now we can go to go to a portal, and first we need to do some configuration of a portal. It is inside of management. A portal page management and choose server management. Okay, and we need to add one 
uh, at our as server as the host server of a portal because only a server has the capability to publish service a portal cannot so we need to so a, so a portal can host the a server and use the capability of a server to publish service and here we need to import the url of a server we can just go back and copy the url of a server and to hold it here Okay, and the server alias is the uh, nickname of our I server. We just give it like my I server. Yeah, just any or whatever you want. My is my I server. And whether to be a host server, we check it. Okay, and manager account. This is the manager account of Supermap I server. We just need to import it, the manager account of Supermap as server, and click OK. All right, and the whole and then uh, in the hosting server, uh, we can say this server is already hosted, and in the hosting server there is uh, one um, tab named as hosted data configuration, hosted data configuration. And there is a relationship storage configuration. Relationship storage configuration. And here we we need to config the uh, we need to config the I server the URL of I server again, like the I server address is this one, and I server account is the same the administrator account, and click validate. Okay, and then click save. Okay, now it, it shows the save the uh, configuration of our server successfully. Okay, now that's that's all, and we can go back to our portal, and and click resource center, click resource center, and choose data. Like first, we need to upload our spatial data as a base map here, right? And click upload data. Okay, and the data type, we just choose supermap UDB data. The sec we just need to choose the second one, supermap UDB data. Okay, and the select file of this zip file war 4326.zip click open and uh, the tags we can we can put as whatever we want we just make it as default and click next and here we uh, whether we want to uh, after we upload the data, do we do you want to select the types of service to be published? Uh, and for this one, we need to select the REST data service and REST map service. And click upload and publish. We need to check data service and the map service and then up click upload and publish. Yeah, it is showing uploaded successfully. Now it's publishing. We just need to wait a moment for the public. Yeah, now upload and publish successfully. Published successfully, okay. And now we can go back. Uh, we we can go back to uh, to the 
uh, and now we need to set this map service as the base map of our uh, coronavirus data. And so we need to go to management and then choose the site configuration. It's the same, do, do, do you remember? The site configuration and then choose data wise. Okay, and in the base map, we need to click add more. Uh, oh, sorry. Before uh, the before the service, uh, we need to uh, sorry. Before the service, uh, we need to make this service as a map. Okay, and here in my uh, yeah in the resource center and in my we can see this map work for for three two six right. And the address of this map is this one, this one, and click maps, and to click the name of, of, of this map here, and uh, we can copy this, copy this URL, and go back to the resource, resource center, service, and the register service register service and here we need just need to choose a supermap rest service uh, uh sorry uh, it's not service it's a resource center map i'm sorry it's map because uh, just now we just uh, uh, just now we uh, published our data as map service but the map service is not map and if we want to config this map service as the base map of our data visualization. So we need to add this map service as the map first and then config this map as the base map of a uh, data visualization, right? So we need, we, just, we need to click add map and uh, paste the URL of this map here and choose everyone can search, everyone can view and login user can add it. Click OK. Now, uh, successfully <laughs> and then we go to management and uh, site configuration data wise and uh, click add more then now we can find our map here <laughs> all right and click OK yeah and we can find our map here uh, we can drag it at from uh, to the to the first. We can drag it to the first, and it will show as the first default base map. And click save. That operated successfully. Okay, and go back to our portal, and now we can go to data wise. Okay, and close this one. Uh, and now uh, this is the map, uh, this is the data I just uploaded, right? And we can add layer, add more layers, such as uh, this one, add from search, because we already uploaded this data as a data, uh, as a data service. So we just need to choose the data word for 326. Okay, and click add. It, it is loading. Okay, now this data, this is the data uh, data service and we can configure the, uh, the color, the base color of it. And this is as the base map, so we can make it all of them as green. Okay, and now I want to add some more. So we can click add layers. And I want to add the, uh, the coronavirus data. So I can choose add from file. All right, and click upload, up upload. So in upload, we can choose the daily data. Uh, so for example, this one and click okay. And uh, there are four types, four, types of methods for us to choose how we want to add this data. 
and uh, because in this data, uh, it has the field same as the field in uh, the base the base map, right? So we can choose by coding. Okay, and the field one is province or sta uh, state, and the field two can be country or region, right? And the associated table is the data is the REST data service we published just now, and the associated field is the field from our uh, from our service which we need to choose the same one province or status or country and region. And then click add. Let's take a look at the results. Okay, now we can uh, we can take a look at it. Uh, and here is some of the country or region uh, already been marked by uh, this uh, purple, right? And when we click it, we can see there are some function, some uh, field named as confirmed, confirmed that this is in India. And the death and uh, uh, recovered here. Okay, and uh, how about if we want to show, now we want to uh, make it as different color and the, the confirmed high, more high, uh, the color is more red. So we can choose the style of it as range, range, and the field choose it as confirmed. Okay, confirmed. And the range method, we can uh, find a good one for which can show it better. I think the natural bricks, this one, or the natural bricks will be better. And the range number is 15. Okay, now we can see it's showing like this. <laughs> like the more red, this one is in Hubei, right? We can check it. In Hubei, the, the confirmed is already 67,000. And here in, in, uh, in Germany, there are uh, one, more than 1,000. Okay. So, uh, so this is the map like this. And we can also uh, configure, configure it as other uh, color, like this one. And uh, uh, there are some, uh, there are a lot of uh, configuration we can do based on, uh, based on this data. Okay, so we just, we just, we just choose this one. And uh, uh, this is only a simple example. We just make it as an example. And uh, uh, actually, if we want to create a professional map, we can add a lot, add a lot of layer here, add, uh, add a lot of layers from here and configure them as whatever we want. Okay, so for this one, we just finish it and click save. Uh, give it a name as uh, like virus map and click save. Okay, saved successfully. And, I, and also I can share it with others, like public. Okay, close. Uh, now we already finished the data visualization and we already can see all the data here. Okay, and we can go back to iPortal and go to Map Dashboard. Go to Map Dashboard. And select the template as a blank one. Click OK. So this is the uh, map, the page of map dashboard. And uh, and in the uh, components, 
we can see there are a lot of components like the container, like map scene. So first in the map dashboard, we need, there should be a map, right? And we can just drop the map here. And on the right side, we can choose, we can select the map and we just need to choose the virus map and click OK. Okay, and now we can see the map is like this. And for this map on the right side, we can configure the parameters of it. Such as, sub, we can choose the sub components and uh, there is a, uh, uh, there is a identify, okay, identify. All right, and uh, we can click this button to show it. And here, search layer, we can, we can select the layer as this one. And uh, the display field, we want to display the field, uh, the display the field of uh, first one is the country and region. And the second one is the province or status. And the third one is confirmed. And then recovered and death. Okay. Country, region, province, status, confirmed, recovered, and death. And now when we go back and if we click one of the region, we can see the information as the pop up here. Okay, so this is the map. And, and then uh, we want to add a title of this dashboard, right? So we can choose uh, text. We can choose the text uh, from it, text here. We just need to drag it to the dashboard and to put it as bigger, like, like this big and to modify the content as various various dashboard okay and also we can uh, like we can choose the style of it the font size we put we make it bigger okay various dash uh, various dashboard and also we can set the color, uh, for example, uh, I want to choose a blue one. I think like this. Okay, so this is the title. And also we can add the time component here. And it can show the real uh, the, the time now. It's very easy, right? And also in components, uh, we can choose some diagram, like the charts. For example, the line chart. Yeah, such as this one. Such as this one. And in this line chart, I want to show the time series chart. So here we can select the data. And uh, in my data, uh, we can see, oh, sorry, I forget to upload the time series data, right? So uh, now I can, uh, I can go back to, uh, to my portal page. Yeah, and here in the, re in the resource center, uh, like data, upload data, and then here we can choose the Excel. The data type is Excel. And the data file, uh, like I want to create the time series, okay, time series confirmed, and then click next. And click next. 
and upload. We don't need to publish as service. Okay, now upload. And then I can go back to map dashboard and select, uh, choose this line chart, select data and uh, choose my data. So there is a time series confirmed Excel, right? And click okay. <clears throat> so now it is showing the data and we can config the uh, X uh, access data here. Uh, the X should be uh, should be total. Oh, sorry. The the X should be date. X should be date, right? And the Y I want to show it as total China and out of China. I just want to show this three. Okay, and here is number of display data. I want the default is only display 20, but I want to display all of it. Okay, so this is all of the data and enable uh, italic on X. And I want to make it longer. like this. So now we can see uh, the, uh, now we can see the line charts. And uh, this is showing from this day to this day and uh, the, uh, and uh, we can put our mouse here. The blue line is showing the total number of coronavirus confirmed cases. And the green line, the green line is showing in China and the purple line is showing outside of China. All right, and uh, it's, it's the same. We can add some others, such as, uh, such as we can add, uh, uh, for example, here in the charts, we can add a radar chart and we can, we can set the time out, uh, set the configuration of it and also we can add the progress bar, the progress bar like this, and we can set the uh, liquid fuel like this. So uh, there are a lot of uh, companies we can choose. Okay, so I think uh, for today, we don't need to uh, make the dashboard step-by-step -step and to uh, find it and I think if you have if you are interested uh, in the uh, JS dashboard you can do it later and for all the steps for all the steps uh, we will send you the detailed document of this whole steps uh, later to your email okay I think uh, that's all for uh, today's training uh, of my part and uh, uh, next I think my colleague Chin will uh, continue the part of uh, Supermap I desktop. All right and uh, now uh, do you have any uh, question about it and uh, if, if you have any question just uh, please just feel free to uh, ask.